Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> When you write a script, the sky's really, you know, the limit, whatever it is that you can dream up. But when it's time to make the thing, bringing it into reality can be difficult, uh, depending on how dreamy your dream is. And once that pencil was going through the spider web, Someone was just sitting there, but he turned to a monster. We couldn't have done it without that that space, that's for sure. We looked at lots of different spaces. Uh, we originally hoped that we could shoot the movie in our studio, which was, you know, just the right size in our minds until we actually, you know, hired the production designer and it got a lot bigger and... Uh, we needed a place that was the size of a mall. You know, that's where they shot the lighthouse. And it was like, you know, big enough for like a massive production. But we did, you know, we did take up quite a bit of space there. Mm -hmm. There's a tin can world. Here's the crazy plans. Small pieces. And uh, they've all been CNC'd. They're all the same, Daddy. They're all different, actually. Same, Daddy. Okay. Just did the coat of paint on the walls here. I really like the warehouse. I spent a lot of time sort of alone in, in distant corners of the warehouse. Uh, I'd work on my walking by myself. I, I did a little recording project with a toy bugle that we had on set. I was a pretty cool environment to work in, you know, and it fit really well with the vibe of the project, you know, which was sort of this dystopian industrial future you know that the warehouse seemed like it would be a place where these canisters could be housed if this were a real scenario we get so much of the same kind of old-timey period pieces set in fishing villages and, and that sort of thing so uh, when the opportunity to work on something different like this you know with like true artists uh, i was i wanted to find a way to do it they're sitting dude Indeed, yeah. Kind of looks like he's taking a poop. Uh, obviously, a big part of it is in the can itself. So, I just, yeah, I, I thought figuring that whole thing out uh, with Seth and, and Kevin uh, uh, was super fun, and, and and was cool to see a lot of the ideas that we talked about uh, come to life and work. Like a lot of the time, people have big dreams about what they want to do, and then it all it all goes. To crap uh, on the day because there's no time and, and all, all the reasons that, that those things uh, go south but uh, to, to see the shots like the 360 shots the rolling shots the water shots all, all that stuff that we talked about actually make it into the finished product was was super cool just grads endies cola seth and i talked he yeah, was like, yeah. well, what do you think of the script and i was honest that i was like a little bit uh feeling that it was too smart for me or I was like a little bit confused by it and he said good. It was like working with a puzzle basically. I took a little time to kind of like try and piece everything together. Uh, not for when you're wearing this I think yeah if that's cool we'll, we'll, we're gonna put some mild cushioning in there probably. Yeah, chest iteration three, Pain helmet is iteration seven. Well, I just found last week that stuff was a little bulky. I think it might fit, actually. Let's, let's try yeah. the smaller one and see. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you don't need any karate kicks. Good. <laughs> yeah, I think all this stuff is going to do weird stuff with the light, right? Like this. I mean, just, just high and low places. Because they change color as you walk around. Really oh. Everything fits Kevin's head. Yeah. I love it. Do you still have stuff that you have to do for today, like put costumes you have to put together for shooting today? No, I'm done today. Oh. I'm working on tomorrow now. Oh, that's awesome. But this is the last thing for tomorrow, so that is feeling pretty good right now. Oh, no. Oh, He's did I get you? Oh. Oh. I thought that was snow. That's much worse. Whoa, studio <laughs> dog. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not moving. That's if I do it high up.
out so I can get closer to the ground. It's kind of what I've had in mind. Uh, if it's coming, it's coming off. We'll do a little thing on Tuesday, just us for like the smaller stuff. So if you wanted to have another one after with the slime, we could do it later too. Okay. Yeah, we won't wait until you guys will do our thing and whatever works to like come together. Yeah, it's fine. The heaters that are on and as well as um, just the water and whatnot as we get into that around the electrical gear. And that is all, thank you so much. I mean, it's really one of my favorite experiences on set because it really felt like kind of a, like a well i want to say summer camp but let's say winter camp because it was really cold <laughs> and wintry um but like we were all in this one location kind of like digging digging in there and getting into the nitty gritty with with each other and For each scene, uh, Seth would have notes in his in his script about like what Fred's heart rate might be from this scene to that scene, and like so it was all figured out in like beats per minute, and then that information was given to uh, to Keith Mitchell, who was you know the uh, switch king of the art. You know, it was just very like old school. I'm sure anybody who watches this movie like would just assume that like we would have that hooked up to some type of like scene that would like make it do what we needed or was actually actually like a heart monitor on the actor or something. But of course it wasn't that. It was Seth saying, okay, yeah. whatever. 80. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Keith would be there with a with a metronome app on his phone, gripped with a magic arm in front of his face. A real switch hitting every single one of those. Um, which is pretty wild. Now one was yelling out. That would certainly work. And then you don't need us to put anything in there because no. I loved the day we shot the 360 and we were like all working together to make that happen. Um, that felt like we were in some sort of like traveling circus together, like working on our performance because <laughs> we had to be so quiet. It was a pretty small crew and the people we had just were like super smart and worked their butts off. Uh, when I think I was talking to you, Nancy, we, you know, I was like, oh yeah, what are we thinking for a team? And you're like, it'll be two people. <laughs> And I thought, like, we can't, like, we'll fail. Like, we can't, how would we do it with two people? It sounded insane. But we ended up getting the right people and working at a pace that was manageable. And then beyond that, like, it turns out that the whole way the whole crew worked, it was more of like a community rather than like only these people do this. Um, so, like, when we needed extra hands to flick a switch or hold a flag or, do, you know, do whatever needed to be done during the shot, we actually had like a whole community of people even though they weren't specifically in that department to help out. And we did do it. Delivering the whole thing uh, on budget-ish was, was the most daunting task uh, for sure. And then it wasn't just like building the sets, it was like building the gags into the sets too, like the, the can opener and, and the things that we talked about before with the, with the, the can itself and, and having the gags work and using like a, a higher budget mentality, like knowing how we would do it on a, on a bigger production, but then having it be safe in that way, but then being able to do it as, at a smaller scale was hard for sure. Was it that cramped, like, until I think we did the water, filling the water thing? But usually there's like a nice opening, you know, where I could be handed a coffee. I kind of did love that um, water filling tin can sequence and like having the, having to make that happen um, and not, you know, drown. Not that like I was gonna drown. There was no, there were no safety issues. But you know, stuck in the tin can filled with water. It was all very exciting. That's everything. Don't know how to look for you, bud. Looks good. Our rain buckets catching rain as we speak. 
I think I found one of your towels. Hey, neighbor, why don't you open your window and say hi? What? Just reach down and yank out that tube coming out of your rear end. You DJing, bro? What's your excuse? Stupidity. Silicone is so, it is super flexible, but when at a certain scale, like once you get like a certain thickness, it's hard to make it kind of like sag and bend the way you think something that is like a big gooey soft thing containing a child <laughs> should sag and bend, right? Like <laughs> a big flesh bag. And then adding to that, like having a, a baby or child puppet inside that also moves to some degree was just sort of like, all right, well, we'll see. <laughs> Happy birthday. It's really slimy. At the end was like, I was pretty damn proud of it. Um, it was quite horrifying <laughs> and like weirdly beautiful also. Like I, at the end of it, I was just like, yeah, it's like glittery and kind of pretty and also like the grossest possible thing. <laughs> Right now, and I was like, I kind of wish that we could just see your face all the time. How do you feel? Yeah, so I appreciate the monitor. Thanks for helping. Here, maybe a little here. Yeah, thanks. Perfect. That's good. Yeah, that's what the penis and slushy for your dark. Yeah, so so we'll just do it like this. Q you with Mike. Sound good? Yeah. Alright. Not in your light, eh? I might just massage this. Nance, can you name that? <laughs> <laughs> do you want stick or something? Oh, whatever you did is better. I just oh I might miss the puppet it a bit. Action! Oh, 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 o
we had worked on the proof of concept together, so I roughly knew the direction this was going in. I knew the gist. You know what I thought? I thought I thought about that scene. I was just like, I've never done that before. And then I thought about the ending sequence. I was just like, I've also never done that before. So I figured like this is a bunch of stuff I will do probably once in my life. And then I, I probably won't ever get the opportunity to have that happen again. Because it's so stretchy. I, I had a lot of fun with this whole containment thing. The isolated performing was was intimidating to do, to think about, you know, and just be like, okay, well, you can't, you can't see anyone when I'm saying you or something like that. I mean, just, um, it's, it's intimidating, you know, because like a lot of this was just getting energy from the person in the room, and back and forth and this and that. So not seeing anyone, being so isolated, doing your own thing, that, that was, that was a lesson. That, that was like, that was a bit of a class. This has to come here. Let's call this your leg. I have a summer towel and a winter towel. We have to camera yes, facing towels. you shooting oh, from here. God. So you have to kind of keep your knees this way when you start getting in. And then I think you just kind of do a thing like hands to support your knees. Okay, great. And I also really enjoyed being in a prosthetic like that and acting like with with a disease on you, I guess is what you could say, you know. But that was that was probably like the most that was like the thing I was excited the most about. Keep keep going. Okay, okay. You okay, Simon? All right, okay. No fooling around, right, let's do it. All right, quiet please, everyone, Simon's in the can. There's one picture in particular where it's just like like half of them. Body is just covered in prosthetics, and it's like I've been letting either. my hair grow for months. I just like playing with uh, appearances like that, you know, part of the draw. I guess only a few people can relate to what it's like to be under a prosthetic for hours, you know, hours throughout the day, and that whole putting on and removal process. So, fat suits are kind of interesting, and like full body prosthetics in general. That's my party trick. <laughs> what are your pins for? We're gluing the Velcro onto those things. I get you. The most exciting thing I did was one of those final makeups uh, with Simon on the table there and just really adding a lot of the really gross blood, like the black blood and with some white and all the colors and the lighting was just so cool. And I think it really portrayed what we were trying to do. Um, but I also really loved doing Sarah's makeup with the tentacles coming out of her mouth. Sarah did such a wonderful job and it was a really impactful moment in the film. Hey. I want to speak to whoever I, I would do some weird things like uh, there's a scene where where Anna hits me in the face with uh, the the sort of cleaning wand. It's just this smoking wand, and she shoves it into my face. And for that scene, I had to uh, I would take a hit off of vape, you know, right before she did it, and then hold that in as long as I could. And then we do the scene, and I I blow the vape out of the uh, out of my mask. And that was challenging. <laughs> And then I think maybe Seth cut most of it. It was kind of like Low Life, where he made me eat bugs in the forest for a scene and then just cut it in the end. <laughs> Look, I could actually introduce you to a few clients that would say their worst things. Mankind's been able to overcome every single obstacle we face. Forces of nature, flamen. I love flamen. Damn it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's actually a testament to the craft, you know, the craft of filmmaking, you know, the, the amount of mileage and the overall air of oppressiveness um, that you guys were able to create 
God love you. Was in, he filmed this almost 11 months before the COVID hit, you know, and on a shoestring budget and stuff. And uh, a blessing and a curse that the COVID came along and, and sort of showed everybody exactly what you were working on, you know. Yeah, what's the what's the key? Do you want to go on full time or you want to keep you off of the moment? Am I wrapped up camera after this? Yeah. Yeah, because you're right. Okay. Let's try one more because I want to do a little a little different. All right, cool. Yeah, I want to put a little hope into it. The disconnect was real. That sense of disconnect. I remember we had the discussion one time. I said, "Can we just bring the camera inside the the capsule, just so I can feel?" Because we were filming from outside the capsule through the grates and all that stuff, just so I can have a sense. I, I as the actor, wanted a sense of being a part of everything because there was that constant sense of separation. And that short period of time I was there it was quite oppressive. Um, I don't know whether I should go back to sleep or wake up. Exactly. Yeah. You like it? But no, it was a very enjoyable experience. Um, this? Yeah, that one there. If you could maybe face this one, this direction, that would be, that'd be perfect. The less pronounced consonants, maybe. When, uh, like, you're talking to a child and you're, like, softer voice. Water gasp. Freely as a single cell or combine to form multicellular or colonial structures. What is, what do you, is that like, it's not illustration, but it's like paint, textured art edition in post. Um, I loved that because I remember doing those, those shots, those really long kind of slow zooms, zoom outs, and just really, those were one of my favorite um, scenes to do because Seth was just like, just, go through all of the emotions that <laughs> like would like the journey of thinking really reflecting on what the hell is happening to you so i loved acting those scenes but then when i saw the visual of those things and it was very unusual and, and wasn't in the script necessarily um it was really exciting to see you ready yeah rolling Doing the Foley was uh, definitely a learning experience. Uh, once I learned, uh, figured out how to get those sounds sounding the grossest. <laughs> Seth and I worked on all of those scenes in our basement for 18 months. Uh, I had to wear the suit once. Uh, it was super tight on my neck. I was often the, the hand picking things up, the eyeball. Um, I uh, Seth had to make all those miniatures, and that took him forever. And uh, definitely shoots where Woody also, uh, you know, either did some of the puppeting of things or was on the team uh, because it was just the three of us, and uh, we just had to get it done. What else is your favorite scent? The score, the sound was so incredible. 
football. When I played the Scarlatti song, and I was learning it while we were shooting, and I was listening to it when I was reading the script and breaking it down, and so to actually see it, like, when it happens at the end of the movie, it's just, it's my favorite part of the movie. I just love it so much, It's because it's like, it's almost like a music video. When John uh, finally, you know, gets to his big payoff that he worked so hard for. I love the second half of the movie. I know there's, you know, debate about which which half is better because <laughs> it's a two half movie. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of poetry in the second half of the movie uh, if you really sort of take it in. You know, the whole experience of living through a pandemic after writing and producing this movie has taught me that art can change its meaning through time and context. And uh, yeah, I think it's very interesting. There was so many surprises when I watched it because probably 40% of what we did was in the film and then there's all this extra incredible post-production that happened that was really impressive. I just kind of got like sucked into it like a movie and uh, that virtually never happens with stuff that I work on where I can kind of lose myself and forget that I've worked on it. Yeah, a lot of vision behind the song. Seth, Kevin, like, everyone really killed it, you know. I was really impressed. I was really proud. Dude, I thought it was great. Especially watching it on the big screen. It was like really tremendous and watching people uh, reacting to it. I was blown away. Like it worked so well because it was pretty true to, to sort of what I thought when I read the script of how cool it could be. So still have terms that we invented on, on Tin Can that we still use to this day. Everyone really works so hard and I think you can really see it in the film. Because yeah, it doesn't look like a film that had the budget it did. And a lot of that is on like the crew. It's really a testament to, I think, the filmmaker that you can use all of those elements, the editing, the camera, you know, the performances the lighting and like that to create an overall 100% effect that goes together to tell a very dense and very, very powerful story. I was very, very impressed with it as an end product. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs>